Shalom, shalom. As always, first and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash, and next double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone, who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith regardless of whether people hear or forbear. And uh, I'm going to bring out some scriptures on a topic that is uh, very commonly misconstrued. All right. And that topic is about the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees. OK. Um, a lot of times, you know, we grew up in the if you grew up in the church, they taught you that the wicked uh, Pharisees and Sadducees were wicked because they tried to keep the law. OK, that's what you were taught. All right. But in actuality, they were they were actually wicked because they, they were teachers of the law, but they did not keep it. All right. And we're going to read into that, okay, because a lot of uh, a lot of Christians use this to try to say the law is done away with, the law is evil, all right, and that's just not the case, all right, and we're going to prove that through the scriptures. Everything in the Bible, whether it's Old Testament, New Testament, Apocrypha, whatever it is, it all goes together. Let's lock it for a second. So I can bear with so, so I can just have a quick distraction. But um, anyways, once again, as I'm, I'm going to say that one more time. Everything in the Old Testament, New Testament, Apocrypha, it all goes together. Nothing contradicts itself. Nothing contradicts one another. Okay? It tells you, uh, I believe, in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, that all, that all doctrine or all scripture is profitable for, uh, for doctrine to reproof. And let me, let me just, let me, matter of fact, let me go there. I don't want to butcher it. I know it, but I just don't want to butcher it. I don't want to butcher it, so let me go there right quick. Okay, Second Timothy chapter three and verse sixteen. It says, "All Scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High." It doesn't say just old. Doesn't say just new. All right, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All right, so you know a lot of Christians they tell you, when you go to these churches, they tell you. Stay away from the Old Testament. The Old Testament is done away with. Why would the Lord put it in there if it wasn't profitable? All right. If all if all that that He wanted us to read was everything was in the New Testament, the Gospels and the Epistles. All right. And then of course the the prophecy, the Revelation. You know, if that was the case, then why would the Old Testament even be included in the Christian Bible? All right. And you know, but that's that's because. Obviously, we, we know the answer to that, man. Christianity was created by Esau Edom to cause chaos and confusion, all right? That's the reason why it says in the scriptures, Revelation chapter 12 and 9, that the, that the devil uh, and spiritual demon Satan have deceived the whole world, all right? And it, it, it really blows my mind to think that people read that scripture that tells you the devil deceived the whole world, and yet they never think to themselves that, the first place that an evil spirit that the devil would go to would be the, the world's church. Even when it tells you that that the devil, um, even the devil uh, can, uh, displays himself as an angel of light. He comes to you as an angel of light. Okay. You know, the devil's not going to come and say, hey, I'm an evil spirit. I'm here to deceive you. All right. Hang on. So lucky. Okay. So lucky. Somebody keep somebody keep trying to call me, but anyways. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this scripture. Alright, once again, the topic of this video is gonna be uh about the, the wicked uh, uh Pharisees and Sadducees, alright? The reason why they're wicked. It wasn't because they kept the law, it's because they actually did not keep the law and they were preaching it, so they were hypocrites. Alright, so this is coming out of the book of Saint Matthew, chapter twenty three, I'll start at verse one. Then spake Yahweh to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. So like I'm going to read that. I'm going to read that one more time. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. That observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. That's the whole reason why they were, why they were deemed wicked. All right. So the Lord himself is telling you, he's speaking to the multitude and to his disciples. He's saying the Pharisees, they're actually, you know, they they actually uh, 
they teach the right things, but they don't they don't do them. Okay, they they're, they teach the word, but they don't actually live it. All right, it says, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. For all the works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Okay, so they, 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 want, to, they want to get the praise of men, is what it's saying. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi. So they like the, they like the title of it. And be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ and all ye are brethren. Okay, even the Hamashiach. And just bear with me. I'm going I'm to pull up a quick scripture because I don't want to forget it. Bear with me. Okay. I just want to hold that. All right. So the whole reason why, why the Lord called them wicked is because they, they taught the word, but they didn't, they didn't live it. All right. Okay, it says, uh, let's see, verse 9, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for, for one is your master, even Yahweh HaMashiach. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. It says, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. All right, and we see that. We see that. Um, and this really... You know, when I, when I when I read this, it, it parallels to me. And it makes me think of once again, man, the, these pastors in these churches. You know, they exalt themselves. They you know they buying up these these huge mansions. You know, driving fancy cars, three piece suits. You know, and they love the title. Okay, they love the titles of being called a, a bishop or a deacon. You know, pastor, elder, all these different things. All right, there's nothing, there's nothing really wrong with that, but. If you're not teaching a true doctrine and you're not living it out yourself, you know, then then you are you are a hypocrite and you are, you know, pretty much the same as these Pharisees that the Lord was calling out himself. All right. And once and, you know, it, anyway, I'm gonna keep reading. I'm gonna keep reading. It says uh, verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are not entering to go in. One well, to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. One well, to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. All right. <laughs> so he's he's really digging into them. He says, Woe well, to you, ye blind guys, which say, Whoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. You fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. So that's another that's another thing that uh that he's calling them out for is, you know, being lovers of money rather than lovers of the most high. And we see that, man. A lot of the, a lot of these uh these pastors, man, they they um <clears throat> they are the modern day Pharisees and they So like I don't know why I'm losing my train of thought. But um they uh they tell you the laws are done away with, but then at the same time, they're asking people to pay tithes, which is part of the Levitical laws. So, you know, this is full on madness, man. It says, you, it says um, ye fools, you fools and blind for whether is the greater, the, whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold. And whosoever shall swell by the altar, it is nothing but whosoever swears by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Right. You fools and blind for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctified the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by the heaven, sweareth by the throne of the Most High, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise, and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. All right, it says, Ye blind guides would strain that gnat and swallow a camel. Would strain it in that and swallow a camel. So they're saying, like, they're saying that you, you, um, essentially, you make a big deal out of things that are tiny, but then when it comes to the, the big stuff, you completely skip over that. And, and you see that. You see that with, like, uh, a lot of these people. I know a particular guy, um, he's always trying to get on people, calling people out and all that. 
you know, but but at the same time, he's full on teaching out false doctrine. He he's part of that that once saved, always saved nonsense. All right, and that is going to lead people straight into destruction because that pretty much tells you you don't need to fear the Lord. You already saved, you know, and that nothing nothing is coming. All right, there's no there's no tribulation. You already you know you already saved. It's all good. All you got to do is believe. You know, you know, keeping the commandments don't matter. Your works ain't gonna matter. None of that. And we're not, I'm not saying that you're saved by works, okay, but, you know, you're not saved by keeping the law because if you don't believe in the, in the Messiah, if you don't believe in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, you know, you're going to be destroyed. Or if you're not chosen by him, you're going to be destroyed, no matter how many good works you do. But at the same time, you know, on the opposite end of that, those that are not at the elect, they're going to be living lawlessly and they're going to be destroyed for that. All right, you know, so... I mean, <clears throat> it's really not difficult to understand, but anyways, I'm going to keep reading. So Matthew 23, verse 25, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Right, so they got they got nice, big, fancy churches, you know, like I said, three-piece suits, and, you know, everybody's coming dressed to impress. But then on the inside, these people are wicked, terrible, and destitute of faith, man. You know, they really don't believe, they really don't even believe in the words. And we, we know this because when you bring out the scriptures to them, they try to find each and every way to obey, or to, have to be able to not obey the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments. But they say they love the Lord. And that makes me think of a scripture. I'm just going to bring it out right quick. First uh, Titus, or it's like it, Titus chapter 1 and verse, uh, I think it's 16. I'll bring that out right quick. Actually, yeah, yeah, 16, that's it. Titus chapter 1, verse 16, it says, They profess, so like it, they profess that they know the Most High, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. So they just completely fail at, at doing the works of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Alright? So I'm just going to, I get the definition here for retro, reprobate. It says, an unprincipled person. So they have no principles. They don't believe in the law, statutes, and commandments. It says, a, and this is a good. It says, a sinner who is not of the elect and is predestined to damnation. The noun for it is rogue. All right, down there at the bottom it says rogue. So they're rogue. That means they go against. Okay, they go against the good works of the Lord, and we see that, man. When you, you know, whenever you try to teach obedience to the law, statutes, and commandments, you can best you can best you know best believe that. The first person that's going to rise up against you is going to be a Christian, all right? And it's really, it's really irritating. That's why, that's what inspired me to do this video in the first place. It says, verse uh, 26, Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, then the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto white sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Okay, because they make no difference between the profane and the holy. All right, they uh, you know they they tell you the laws are done away with, so they look good. They got these big fancy churches and all that, but on the inside, these churches are full of dead bones. I mean, they're full of of people that are spiritually dead. All right, that's why that's the reason why most of the people you know they got all these scandals going on in these churches, man. Uh, homosexuality, child molestation is rampant adultery, all this wickedness, man. Okay, it says, Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. All right, so the modern day, the modern day Pharisees are, are these, these people that are in the church. And it's the same way back then. You know, uh, Yahweh and the disciples, they were street preachers. And they were homeless. And they went from city to city preaching the gospel. The people in these churches, man, you know, just like the, the uh, scribes and Pharisees, they preach in these synagogues and they exalt themselves. Well, modern, you know, the church, the churches, but back then the synagogues, and they exalt themselves. All right. It says, uh, verse 29, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. All right. And, and that's exactly what it is, man. You know, uh, the true prophets of the Lord, which are the Hebrew Israelites, Okay, and not all of them, but particularly those of uh, of Great Millstone, you know, the head apostles and elder bishops, 
the ones who are really bringing out the word and fullness and the truth, the Old Testament, New Testament, Apocrypha, they lining it up, you know, and they um, they bringing out the full understanding of the gospel and of the Bible. And it's very obvious to these Christians that those are the men that really have the 100% understanding because a lot of these Christians are actually watching the men of Great Millstone and learning from them. And then they try to take what Great Millstone has taught them and flip it around to use it against them. And it's not going to work. But, um, I mean, we, we see that, man. That's pretty much what's happening. And they say, you know, if we were around during those times, we wouldn't be partakers in the blood of the prophets. We wouldn't be persecuting the prophets. But that's exactly what they're doing today. All right. And if we read on further down, you know, to tell you that, verse 31, Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Okay. So because they, they live out they live out the measures of their fathers. All right. You know, reincarnation, man. And uh, I'm not going to. That's a different topic for another day. I think I got enough out of this chapter. But the point is, is that the reason why this, the Pharisees and scribes were wicked is because they taught, you know, they, they, they lifted themselves up as teachers, okay, but they, uh, they weren't practicing what they preach. And that's exactly what, you know, we see today in the Christian church. These, these are the modern day Pharisees and scribes, and really they worse than the modern day Pharisees and scribes, and they really worse than the uh, Pharisees and scribes. And I say that because at least the Pharisees and scribes actually taught sound, sound doctrine. They actually taught the law, statutes, and commandments. The, the Christian church, they, they just full on went the other way, and they pretty much teach do what thou wilt, which is the, the uh, doctrine of Satanism and Al Aleister Crowley, all right? So they're really worse than the, than the Pharisees, man. But I just want to get that point across, you know, the Pharisees were not wicked because they taught, uh, because they tried to, they, they were uh, uh, fo focused on the law. They were wicked because they, they, um, they were preaching the law, but were not practicing it. They were hypocrites. That's what Yahweh Shah was calling them out for. All right. And I want to also bring out that they were using the law unlawfully. OK. Um, and I'm going to show you the example of that right here in uh, St. John, chapter eight. All right. Because the laws, according to the laws, there is there is different, um, you know, there's punishments for different uh, sins, different transgressions. All right. Sometimes it'd be stoning, you know. Uh, being set on fire, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, and um, you know, actually, matter of fact, I'm gonna get this scripture before I I get that John chapter eight. <clears throat> I gotta find it real quick though. Salakia, bear with me. They lay burdens that they themselves cannot bear. Okay, and this this is a perfect example of that in this John chapter eight. Okay, it's in, actually in Matthew 23. I must have read over it. But didn't notice it. All right. So I'm gonna read I'm gonna read it out of Matthew chapter twenty three and verse four. It says, uh, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So in other words, they they hold people accountable to these laws that they're not actually practicing, that they're not keeping, and they try to condemn people based on these laws. That they don't that they don't even keep themselves. All right, that's that's why they were wicked. Okay, they were they were hypocrites to the max, and we're gonna read about this is an instance of this in uh, John chapter eight. This is the famous story of who cast, you know, who he who was without sin cast the first stone. A lot of Christians they love to go into this, and it is very uh, edifying. So I'm gonna read into that. All right, so Saint John chapter eight and uh, verse uh, three. Okay. It says, it's actually, I'm, oh yeah, verse 3. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery when they had set her in the midst. They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? All right, so they're trying to, they're trying to get him caught up, trying to get him to go against the laws, statutes and commandments of the Lord. All right. It says, this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Yahweh stooped down and with his finger wrote in the ground as though he heard them not. All right, so he's very, and this is a very clever move that Yahweh is about to do. All right. Essentially, they're trying to hold him to the law. They're trying to get him to break the law and say, no, no, don't stone her. You know, and which would be going against the laws of Moses. But instead, what he's going to do is he's going to say, he's going to say, hey, uh, you know, who here is not guilty of sin? of some form of sin and has not been punished for it yet. So if you're going to stone this lady, then everybody here has to be, has to receive punishment for their sins as well. All right. 
That's what he's going to do. So in that way, he's not he's not actually going against the laws of Moses. All right. In this way, he doesn't actually go against the law of Moses. But he's you know this is where the whole thing comes from. You know uh, about uh, not not uh, not condemning your brother without looking at the moat that's within your own eye. All right. This that's where this whole thing comes from. Okay. So he he doesn't that, he never actually says you know he never actually goes against the laws of Moses. He just says hey well if this woman is to be stoned, then aren't you all supposed to be stoned? Or, you know, whatever punishment the law prescribes, okay? And that's where, that's where grace comes in at, okay? And Christians, they don't understand that. They think that, they think that that means, well, we could just do whatever we want to do. No, there's still judgment for that. You're still going to receive judgment. It's just saying that the Heavenly Father and Yahweh uh, Shai are going to be the ones that judge you at the end, and you're still going to receive punishment for your sins unless the Lord... That's the Lord, Yahawashai decides that, you know, he wants to hold you guiltless and blameless. And that's what we are, you know, that's essentially what we're hoping for. All right. And that is a gift because according to the law, we all are worthy of punishment. All right. So that's why we're under the law of grace now. Okay. So, I mean, it's a very simple concept, but once again, they, they really butcher this. And this is another, this is another reason why it's all going to tie in together, but this is the reason why. The uh, you know, I say that that modern day Christians are uh, are the the really pretty much the, the modern day Pharisees of today the because they try to use the law unlawf unlawfully the same way that the Pharisees used the law unlawfully to condemn people and to to murder their enemies you know by saying oh well this person did this so we're gonna stone them or we're gonna burn them or whatever knowing that they're just as guilty as the people that they're about to inflict punishment on all right. So they were using the law in a way that was carnal so that they could um, they could uh, execute their own desires. All right. And the Christians do the same thing, but they do it with the law of grace. They say, you know, they pretty much they abuse the law and say, well, you know, law of grace gives us license to sin instead of using it for its proper purpose, which was for people who really failed to do the right thing in patience. You know, people who are actively really trying to do the right thing and they receive grace. And they, they, you know, they completely flipped it and took it and tried to use the law of grace as, okay, we can do whatever we want. We can abuse that grace. And then when you bring out to them Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 and thir through 31, you know, then they, they try to say, that's not what that means. Matter of fact, let's just go there since, since I brought it up. All right. Let's just go there. They try to use the law of grace to justify their wickedness. And that's not what it was created for. All right. So let's go there because this this talks about people who do that specifically, and like I said, this is really the work of the of the modern day Christian church, man. And we know why, because it was set up by Esau Edom, who is who is the devil, okay, the so-called white man, going all the way back to the Greeks and the Romans. They are lawless, all right. They're lawless, and they want everyone else to be lawless as well. That's the reason why these people that enslaved so-called Negroes, murdered and raped and stole the land of the so-called Native American Indians. They did it all under the guise of Christianity, right? They can take the Bible, they can take the Bible and try to flip it and use it unlawfully to justify their bloodshed, their murder, and their their abominate the abominations, you know, and their their crime, man. Just just flat out, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Atrocities, all right. They try to they try to use the Bible at that time to justify it, okay? The same way that they try to use the Bible now to justify their lawlessness. Through the law of grace. But that's not what it's about. And I'm going to prove that right here. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. It says, for if we sin willfully. You see that key word. For if we sin willfully. After that we have received the knowledge of the truth. It remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Okay. So the law of grace was supposed to be for those who failed in patience. Because the reality of it is. Is that no one can keep the laws perfectly. Alright. No one, can keep, no one can keep the laws perfectly. It says, but a certain fearful looking for. Of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. All right, so it's telling you here that if you sin willfully, then you're, you know, if you sin willfully, then you might as well go ahead and prepare yourself for judgment and fiery indignation, which is going to devour the adversaries because there's, there remain no more sacrifice for your sins. When the Lord sacrificed himself, he didn't do it for, as a license for you to just willfully, willy-nilly commit sins. All right, look at this. verse uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. 
It says, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who trodden underfoot the Son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. So that's pretty much saying how much worse is it going to be for those who, who willy-nilly just pretty much say that the blood of the covenant, you know, they stomp on it, they trample over it, all right? And say, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And they do, they do despite unto the spirit of grace. Meaning they go, you know, they, they abuse the spirit of grace. How much worse punishment is it going to be for them? You see, and that's what they don't get. Okay. They don't understand that. That's why the Lord, when the Lord comes back and he comes, you know, taking uh, flaming fiery vengeance, he's going to destroy these people by fire and a sword. And they're going to think to themselves, what did I do to deserve this? You've been living a whole, a life full of sin and iniquity and wickedness. And when the Lord sent uh, prophets and messengers to come and tell you about, you know, to call you out on your wrongdoing, you you justify it. You know, you try to you you try to carnally use the law of grace to justify your wickedness and your sin, and you're gonna pay for that. But let's get this right quick. Ecclesiastes chapter eight. All right, let's go there. Ecclesiastes chapter eight and verse eleven. Okay, it says. Actually, matter of fact, I'm gonna hold, I have the whole chapter opened up. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of sons of men is fully set them to do evil. So you think because you ain't got judged yet that the Lord, he just he just let it go. He's giving me grace. No, man. It ain't how it, ain't how it go down. And you're going to find yourself in a sticky situation real soon. It says, Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged. You see that? Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear the Most High, which fear before Him. All right? So you're supposed to fear the Most High. It's nothing they tell you in church that you don't got to fear the Lord. He's love, love. You know, He's coming with hugs and kisses. He's coming to save the world. You people don't know nothing, man. Verse 13, But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before the Most High. You're supposed to fear the Lord. You're supposed to fear His judgment, man. Because he will kill you, he will destroy you, and he's going to do it in a horrible fashion. All right? But let's go back to that. I went off topic a little bit. Let's go back to that John chapter 8. All right? He, he without sin, cast the first stone. Okay? Once again, I'm going to give a little recap, man. The wicked Pharisees, they were using, they were using this law. Uh, they were using the laws of Moses to condemn their enemies. All right? To condemn people that they didn't like so that they'd be able to, to justify murdering them. All right? So this is, what the, this is what the Lord did. All right. John chapter 8 and verse 1. Yahweh Shai went into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Yahweh stooped down and with his finger wrote in the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, because they thought to themselves, man, dang, he's, ah, man, we all are worthy of death and sin. He says, and now punishment, Salakia. It says, being it says, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Yahushai was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Yahushai had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Yahweh said in the herd, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. That's what the law of grace is all about. All right? It's a second chance. Even if you were a wicked sinner, okay? Even if you were a wicked sinner before, you know, before you came to the knowledge of the truth, the Lord will give you another chance. All right? And it tells you many times, you know, if you forsake your wickedness, the Lord will give you another chance. All right? And he, he did that. He paid for our sins through his blood. He saved us from the, from the wrath of the Heavenly Father. Through, his, through the blood. That's in uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Let's get that right quick. All right. It says, uh, Much more than, than being now 
Justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. All right. That, that's what the law of grace is all about. It ain't it ain't a it's not a, a license to sin, it's not a license to do whatever you want to do. The Lord would assure you, okay, if you if you sin willfully, if you if you stump and trample all over the blood of the covenant, he will destroy you for that. Okay? Psalms chapter 130. All right, it says, If thou Psalm chapter 130, verse 3. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that, that thou mayest be feared. All right, so the whole purpose of the Lord forgiving you forgiveness is that so you can turn away from your wickedness, okay, and, and fear the Lord. All right, that's the whole purpose, because if you don't, you know what the alternative is going to be. So he gives you he gives you multiple chances. All right, he gives you multiple chances. It actually makes me think of... uh. Let's see, I think it's Ezra 7 and 9. I think that's what it is. Nope, Salaki, that's not it. Uh, it's in the book of Ezra. I'll find it real quick. Ezra 9 and 13. All right, it says, And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great trespass, Seeing that thou art our power, our God, has punished us less than our iniquity deserve, and has given us such deliverance as this. All right. So the Lord is very merciful, but what these people don't understand is that the mercy, the mercy is, is here right now. The mercy is the Lord sending his messengers to preach the gospel to you so that you know you understand and you have a chance to turn back. The Lord gives you a choice. He ain't just gonna come in and destroy you out of the blue. You know, and you didn't know what was going on. The Lord, ain't, he don't get down like that. All right? He's righteous and just. All right. But, you know, when, when he sends his messengers to you and you don't take heed and you continue in your wickedness, and then you're going to be destroyed. It tells you that in Proverbs chapter one. He always sends warning before, you know, before destruction. We see that with the different cities in, in the Bible as well. Sodom and Gomorrah. OK. With the people back in the time of Noah, he sent he sent prophets to warn them of what's coming. They didn't listen, so he destroyed that place. Simple as that. All right, now, I'm going to get a little bit more scripture. I'm going to wrap it up. Going to the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1. And this kind of goes back into what I was saying before about how the Pharisees, they were not wicked because they kept the law. I mean, like it. They were not wicked because they were, they, were, uh, they were focused on the law or, or keeping the law. They were wicked because they actually were teaching it and were not keeping it. All right, the Lord does expect us to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. That's part of the obedience. All right. First Timothy chapter one, because Christians like to say that the law is evil and law is done away with all this nonsense. All right. Listen to this. First Timothy chapter one and verse eight. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. How can you use the law unlawfully? Think about that. OK. Back in the times of, of the Savior. OK. Once again, the Pharisees, they were using it to they were using it carnally as a way to, as a way to get away with punishing their enemies. All right, that's unlawful. They were using it unlawfully. And then on the other side of that, now in today's times, the Christians who are the modern day Pharisees, they use it to they use the law of grace to say that you can do whatever you want and live a, a, a sin filled life. All right, the laws are done away with. Okay, that's so it says, but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous man, because a righteous man is already keeping the law, such as the commandments. He's already. You know, he's just naturally not, not being wicked, but is made for the lawless and disobedient. So who is the lawless today? Those who are telling people that they don't got to keep the law. Okay, the laws are done away with. You connect the dots. It says, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners. And what is sin? First John 3 and 4. Let's go there right quick. Open up another tab. All right. What is sin? Okay. So the law was created for sinners. What is sin? 1 John 3 and 4. Whosoever committed the sin also transgresseth the law. All right, simple. For sin is the transgression of the law. Plain and simple. All right, back to 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. Read that again. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, homosexuals, for men stealers, for liars, and men stealers are uh, slavers, 
Okay? You know, the Edomites are real good at that. It says, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be anything that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. All right? So, here we go. And it tells you here, it goes down into it. I'm I might as well get this. Verse uh, 12, it says, And I thank Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. All right, so there you go. He tells you right there. But I obtained mercy. Why? Because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So if you know the truth, okay, if you know the truth, and you just say, I'm just going to do it if I want to do anyways, you're going to be destroyed. All right. The reason why the reason why the uh, the Gentiles who are the children of Israel that were scattered, the reason why, you know, they're able to obtain mercy now is because throughout history, they were Hellenized and they were practicing the cultures of the heathens. They were fully indoctrinated into the cultures and customs of the heathens. They completely been removed from the Heavenly Father and his law, statutes, and commandments. So the Lord, he gave them a second chance. All right, because they were they were living wickedly in unbelief, and that applies to still to today. Because the people of the world and the Israelites that are scattered in the world, you know, we're up under this Babylonian system. So we were taught and raised in this plantation Christianity. To if the laws are done away with, we can eat whatever we want. You know, we can get tattoos. We can cut off our beards. Okay, men could have long hair and be effeminate. You could be a peanut butter chaser, a homosexual, a lesbian, and the Lord is still gonna he gonna he gonna spare you. All right, you could be a thief, a liar, a robber. You could sleep with the next man's wife. Okay, you could do all these things, but as long as you say you believe in Jesus, then it's all good. That's what the that's what the church taught us, and that's full on lawlessness. All right, it's not that's not what the heavenly Father means by by giving us grace. That's not what that meant. All right, so if you do those things in ignorance, okay. Before you come into the knowledge of the truth, once you come into the knowledge of the truth, you are born again. That's what that means. You're born again, and you are given a clean slate. All right? But from that point on, the Lord expects you to get on the right track. Okay? You can't abuse the spirit of grace and just keep stumping all over. And you can't stump all over the blood of the covenant where you're sanctified and expect nothing to happen. All right? But once again, that's what these, that's what these modern day Pharisees are teaching our people, man. And they're going to pay, pay for that. All right? Uh, but I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to get. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to get this last scripture. I'm going to close out with this. Psalms chapter 19. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. All right. Yeah, i get one more after this. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. It says, the, lo the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. There you go. We have one more, Psalms 119 and verse 9. All right. Psalms 119 and 9. <clears throat> and it reads, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Okay, what do you find in the word? You find the law, statutes, and commandments. Matter of fact, let's just, let's just keep going. Matthew chapter 19. I'm going to close out with this. This is it. This is the last one. Matthew chapter 19. And verse uh, 16. All right, I'll start there. It says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he's, telling, he's asking the Savior, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, who the world eternally calls Jesus, he's asking them, What good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So that tells you that the Lord does require something of you, does expect something of you. Now when it says the Lord gave us a free gift of grace, the gift was that, he gave us a second chance when he didn't have to. The Lord, could have, he could have left us in the darkness and let us be spiritually dead, but he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. All right, He breathed that life into us uh, according to the prophecy of um, Ezekiel chapter 37, the awakening of the dry bones, and of uh, Isaiah 44. All right, He gave us that second chance because we were spiritually dead completely here in America and the daughter of Babylon. That's the gift, all right? Now, what you do with that gift, that's up to you. Well, I'm not even going to say that because there's no such thing as free will, but that's up to the Father. That's up to the, you know, the Father. If he wants to, if he wants to uh, draw you in and, and put the Spirit on you to, to continue in the, in the doctrine, continue in the right thing. 
All right. That's why we pray continuously, man. That's why you got to fear the Lord. You pray continuously that he keeps his spirit on you and doesn't turn you over to the wolves, man. In Psalm 51, King David, after he uh, after he um, committed adultery and murdered Uriah, then, you know, he prayed to the Heavenly Father, please take not thy Holy Spirit away from me because he knew he knew that that if the Holy Spirit was taken from him, he was finished. He was through. All right. So that that's the grace. That's the mercy. Okay, the Lord not taking the spirit up off of you and giving you a second chance to get right and stay right. That's the mercy. All right, so Matthew chapter, uh, or where am I at? What chapter is this? Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. It says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, Yahweh. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, which? So he asked, which ones, if you want to enter eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones do I have to keep? Yahweh shall said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. So like your father and mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All right. So why, why did he, like, where, where is he getting these commandments from? These commandments are coming from the law. Okay. The laws and the commandments are one and the same. All right? The Lord did not come to, to change nothing. He didn't come to change nothing and do something different from the Heavenly Father. They act like, the, the Christians act like like uh, the Lord came and he's a whole separate entity from the Heavenly Father. And, and you know, he is, but they're one in, they're one in the same spirit is what, I, is what I'm trying to say. Okay? They're coming in the same power. All right? The Son has, has been given authority from the Father. All right? And uh, saying they act like Paul came and he Paul went up against the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai. That's not the case. Paul also agrees with them. Go to Acts 24 and 14 and you can see that. Okay. And the people of the world, they called him a heretic for that. Okay. For being obedient to the law, statutes, and commandments. The same way that the, 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 true, the true hypocrites, the true uh, um, heretics who are, who are the modern day Christian church, they come up against the Hebrew Israelites. For wanting to be obedient to the Heavenly Father. They, they actually tell people in the world that they'll be punished. That they don't really have faith in the Lord if they, if they want to obey the law, statutes, and commandments. It just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, man. It makes no sense. All right? They, they, they carnally use the law of grace to justify their wickedness. All right? But um, anyways, man. You know, I, think, I think that's it. Let me see. Is there anything else I want to get before I close out? So, Lock, you bear with me. I got to think. Uh... No, I, th I think that's it. I think that's it for today. Uh, Lord willing, this was edifying to the elect, wherever you may be scattered across the four corners of the earth. With that being said, all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakagwadash. Uh, <laughs> TTA and a bobble ball, Shalom. <laughs>